these two. First up, the man who went from being TV's golden boy, remember, multicolored swap shop, late, late breakfast show, Noah's house party, to being the forgotten man of Teleland. Now he's back with a bang. His show, Deal or No Deal, on Channel 4 is a hit with young and old. Ladies and gentlemen, Noel Edmonds. <laughs> So imagine you've been sitting in Crinkly Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> in the house there, having a quiet smile to yourself with all the press you're getting now about the man, the comeback kid and all that sort of thing. It is, uh, it is extraordinary. I mean, this week, uh, to get a BAFTA nomination right. and to be here with you. Um, <laughs> somebody said to me yesterday, uh, after 37 years, Simon, overnight hit. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it has been a really fascinating period in my life. Did you, did you want to get back? Or did you sit there? I mean, the public perception of you through the media was of you being rather sort of soured by your experience mm. at the BBC, sitting in the big house down there, uh, getting slightly sort of... <laughs> bitter. Well, bitter, yes. Yeah, bitter and twisted. Bitter and twisted. Um, well, you were, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't. I'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> people. And, and I really had no intention of coming back to presenting because I have business interests sure. in television production, radio production, so I was still involved in the industry. Sure. But you see, the point is this, is that you're, you're a studio animal. You come alive in a studio. I mean, you used to just do the, that wonderful house party show, which I used to adore. I mean, that, you had to be somebody who was born to do that kind of job, to do it as well as you did. So, therefore, you're bound to miss it. Don't give me this whole nonsense about you. Well, you listen, you, it is too big a drug, <laughs> mate. You know I don't that. want to fall out with you over this. <laughs> I, the concession I will make is that I'd forgotten how much fun you can have in a television sure, studio. Sure. And at the moment, you're looking at the luckiest guy in television. I have a sore arm from pinching myself every morning what's happening because it's the engagement with, uh, with real people no, again. I mean, you Peter Shill that suits you. I mean, you, you boss the studio and that's exactly oh, what I you're Oh, I love it. I love the fact that it breaks all of the conventions. Mm. You know, here we are with the conventions of television, the audience here, a line, the front of the stage, all the equipment. I can go anywhere mm. in our studio. Mm. And what about the reaction that you've had from the public? I mean, a different kind of reaction, one would guess, from the days when you are at the BBC doing, doing the, yeah, the house party. the thing party. that has astonished me is the breadth of the demographic here. Um, I was at the airport yesterday and a bunch of little kids, seven, eight years old, asked my autograph and there was mum standing there and she said, yes, they dash home from school. And the little boy said, and she got done for speeding last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I must show you this. This is absolute honest truth. This happened this afternoon. I got in a taxi in Westminster to go to Knightsbridge and the cabbie said nothing to me at all. And we got to the end of Beecham Place and he slid the window and he gave me two bits of paper. And he said, the fare, this was Trevor, the fare is eight quid. I've written four quid on one, 12 quid on the other. <laughs> honest, honest, look, you can, you can testify, these are taxi receipts. Look at this. And dumb yeah. old me chose the one with 12 quid That's written on it. <laughs> oh, the other one's got the four. <laughs> it's a deal or no deal. This is how I've had yeah. And, and that's, you know, that is the excitement. Taxi that, receipt, yeah. It's, it, it's the engagement with It could cost with you a people. fortune, this, you know. I know. You could end up a broke man. Yeah, well... <laughs> but it's, I mean, Michael, how much fun. Going back to those days in the BBC, I mean, you must often think back to that, that time. Because, I mean, what you did do... I mean, we didn't just do a successful show, with our house party particularly, I'm thinking of. But you created a kind of genre of television. I mean, that show was groundbreaking. It's easy to look back now at it and see what, what effect it's had on, 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 on mm. shows since then. So you must look back on that time with, a, I suppose, a mixture of, of great joy and then a sadness at what happened. Well, yes, I, I regret that I left Auntie really not under the best circumstances. I mean, it's ironic now. Des and I both left Auntie within, yeah, within the same, same period of time. Yes. And we're both on Channel 4 now. Um, well, you left for different reasons. We certainly He did. went for a job you didn't have one. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and despite your probing, I, I wasn't looking for one. I'd actually said that I was quite happy to retire from television uh, when I was 50. Uh, and it was the manner of the leaving that you're quite right to identify wasn't, wasn't clever, it, it wasn't nice. Looking back on House Party, however, I'm really pleased that people are now 
viewing it with great kindness oh, sure. and great generosity. And two people I admire hugely, Ant and Deck, have taken the principles, yeah. you know, they've, they've been very honest in saying, taking the principles, they've done it their way. Yeah. The mistake I made, um, I think for good reasons, the mistake I made was we should have finished in 95. I mean, if you well, think... That's top of the tree, though, isn't it? I mean, yes, yeah. but if you think about the, the manner in which Generation Game was kept going by resting, reinventing it, bringing it back. I think we asked too much of the public. Yes. Um, and if I'm being candid, I think I was tired. Uh, I was doing 50 shows a year for no, the BBC. And uh, I think people are tired of me. And um, that's why coming back in this manner and getting so much support is fantastic. Can we be reminded of, of those, those days? If you insist, I it's your show. Sure. Sure. It's my show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean the, 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 the man you made a star there, or the creature you made a star there, was Mr <laughs> Blobby. And um, let's be reminded <laughs> of, of, of a wonderful moment between one of many with you and that awful creature. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what, are you pack, what are you packing for? <laughs> blobby, blobby, blobby! <laughs> no, no, Blob. Blobby, blob, blob. There is no point in you packing. You're not coming to New York. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's War to All Stars next week, Blob. You would not fit in in New York. I'm sorry. You'd, I mean, look at you. They won't understand you. You're just going to represent Great Britain in a totally ridiculous way. And next week, it's War to All Star Study Show with great style. I'm sorry. You're not coming to New York. I'm sorry, but there's no room on the plane for you. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry, I made it clear. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I used to sit there and think, I'm glad I'm not working with that bloody creature, but I used to laugh <laughs> all the time at it. It was wonderful. Yeah, what's amazing? Do you know, he, he hasn't aged, he doesn't look older, does he? <laughs> <laughs> you own him, don't you? You've got the rights to him. Um, yes. You've yeah, got, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do you say it that no, way? No, I just said well, it's It's not a good idea. I, I could mean, send him round if you no, want. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think not, no. See, see you, know, you did 50 shows a year there. So, I mean, quite obviously, when all that finished, it did leave a gap in your life, didn't mm. it? That, there's no doubt. Did, uh, and at the same time, in those six years, you've had a divorce as well. Did that play any part, that gap, that depression, maybe, that you might have, have suffered through, or anger even, through being removed from the BBC as you were? Did that play any part in it, do you think? No, I don't think, I don't think so. The, the two things are very, very separate. Um, I'm, I'm very sad that an 18-year relationship ended. Um, it's a form of bereavement when a, a marriage or any partnership ends. Um, I'm determined to focus upon the really good things from that relationship. Um, and they are Charlotte, Lorna, Olivia and Alice. I have four of the most beautiful daughters. And I don't just mean physically beautiful, thank God they are. Um, but they are wonderful people. Mm. And um, I think once you go through the, the pain of it all and then you readjust and you start a new life and you start putting things into perspective, it's very important not to be bitter and to look at the positive things. And yes. actually, I am a very positive person. But it's part of this, this, this positive attitude that you've got. Is, is it a part of this what's called co cosmic ordering <laughs> I've been reading about? I know. Uh, would you first of all explain to me what cosmic ordering is so um, we might understand it better? Um, <clears throat> when you go through a, a, a challenging time in your life, I think it's important that you've got to look for the positives. Um, we have in Western society a belief that to be selfish is quite rightly wrong, because you're putting people down. To be self-focused is good, and there is a country mile between the two. If you're self-focused, you believe that good things are meant to happen to you. And if you can somehow get into that frame of mind, it's incredible how all of a sudden, you know, people find you more attractive. And by attractive, I mean they are offering you opportunities. Your loved ones find you very positive and build uh, off the energy. And the cosmic ordering part is you are allowed, whatever your faith, you are allowed to say to the cosmos, the bigger being, whatever it is, you're allowed to say, this is what I'd like. And you place an order. And some people talk to the moon, and some people go and stand on a cliff and look at the breakers, and some people do what I do, which is write it on a piece of paper, oh. dear cosmos, and you put the order in, and you put, I'd like it delivered by, and it's a good idea to put, you know, not, not to ask for it too quickly, because even Ikea needs a few days to actually <laughs> deliver. But <laughs> my first one was, I wanted a home in the south of France, which my, my girls would like. 
and it came in three months early. Now, how spooky is that? I've done six, four have delivered, I've got two outstanding by the end of April. But that begs the question, did you order up cosmically the, the, the show? Did you... Well, it's, it's interesting, no, I didn't. What I actually did, and I still have the piece of paper, uh, I decided last April, May, that I really needed a new challenge in my life. I was quite happy with the business interests. I was quite happy with what I was doing. I was in the process of moving uh, to this house in France, although I've now also got a base in Devon as well. And um, I put down I wanted an innovative uh, challenge. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know whether it was going to be walking the Great Wall of China or, or doing, doing something. I used to do motor racing, I did powerboat racing. I didn't know it was going to be something associated with that. What came out of it was this phone call in August. And I, I did always say that if I came back to television, it would be with an innovative format, which I think Deal or No Deal is, and it would have to be challenging to me. It, uh, that's an, uh, that is, a, a, of course, I suppose, a definition of, of, of ambition, of, of life, that which keeps you going. Yeah. Without that, what would you do? You'd go back to bed, wouldn't you? Well, exactly. You know, so. And, and <laughs> you know, one of the lovely things about Deal or No Deal, and I don't want to get too heavy about it, is I believe one of the reasons it is engaged with the public and the media so strongly, it actually reflects life. The ups and downs are there, the challenges. You know, where is ambition, where is avarice? How far do you go? The timing, when, do, when do you mm. say, mm. no, this isn't working for me, I'm getting out of this? Mm. And the game is, is all about personality and character, and the fascination is seeing how it comes out in different ways, in different people. You might win that best drama award yet at BAFTA. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, to have the nomination, but, 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 to have well, the nomination, listen, after, after all fabulous. your years in the business, you deserve a BAFTA, not just for, for this, but for, for, for the rest of it. That's my view. But no, Lemus, thank you very much. Indeed. Michael, thank you. <laughs>